Today we are back on Rebirth Island spectating some quads. It's been a while since we've been able to play, so we're going to be taking a look at what players are doing well, mistakes that they're making, and giving you tips for success since Rebirth Quads is the only variation of Rebirth you can play for a little bit. We're also going to be taking questions from my YouTube stream, answering those questions, so we're going to be getting a lot of popular questions to be asked. Now, first things first, let's talk about landing spot here because that is one of the most asked questions that I get. Where should you land? My answer is land wherever you want to. You can really land any spot on this map because of the fact that it's a pretty mobile map meaning if you land stronghold you can take the balloon to living quarters if you land bio you can easily get to other hot areas of the map so you know land where you can win and land where you feel most comfortable what's the best loadout for beginners i mean right now the marco 5 is really easy to use the nz is still very easy to use and is still a very good option for rebirth what's your opinion on slide canceling possibly being removed in warzone 2 so i get people's view on slide canceling right oh the sweat slide cancel but it is one of the biggest skill gaps when it comes to warzone players that slide cancel efficiently have an advantage over players who don't slide cancel at all and that's something that i do think should stay in the game the mobility is one of the most fun parts of warzone so i think it's something that should be kept in this game now right here We've got duo quads. Notice that they are kind of only two people, so you really have to keep that in mind. It's going to be much tougher. They don't ha quite have enough for Lodi, but he does have temper. Note that we do have lootable perks on the ground, so keep an eye out for those. When it comes to lootable perks, by the way, I don't really pay attention to what I have. I just kind of go with the flow and... and you know, whatever I pick up, I use to my advantage. If I only have to put two plates in for temper, that's a great advantage. And look, I'll be aware of temper because I can actually see it. But a lot of times I'll grab like Battle Hardened or Scavenger. I'm not even paying attention to it. What can you do when someone breaks your camera? Biggest tip to counter broken cameras is to un-ADS and hip fire. So a lot of people try to track when they're actually aimed down sight. Whereas if somebody is going to break your camera and sliding around you, you need to un-ADS so that you get that quicker sensitivity. Why don't I coach play Caldera? Yeah, that's a great question. I am, you know, I, my whole goal is just to help you get better at Rebirth and Fortunes Keep, the Resurgence game mode. So if you are looking to get better, just consider hitting that subscribe button down below. My, you know, I just want to see you drop 20 kill games and 30 kill games. But why don't I coach and play on Caldera? It's just too slow for me. A lot of times, you know, if you die, you've got to wait a few minutes to come back and it's super frustrating. They should buy loadout here, by the way. Let's see if they end up going back. They should get loadout down immediately. This guy's... I don't know if this guy's just being weird. I, I don't know what his deal is if he's being weird because he's being spectated. But look, at the end of the day, go buy loadout and then no you can start to really push people from there. How do you get better at hip firing? Uh, well, I mean, first things first is you got to have a gun that you can actually hip fire. But the other thing is just getting used to pulling the trigger before you ADS. I don't know why they're not buying loadout. Right here, they should buy loadout and... Uh, or they go grab the free one and grab the UAV, but especially in quads, I like to have extra loadouts up. I like to have multiple just because dying is inevitable in Rebirth, right? Dying is, it's going to happen. So if we die, I want to have a loadout up that I can grab. Fighting with loadouts, the biggest advantage you can have in Fortune's Keep and Rebirth. So we want to have multiple loadouts up as much as possible. What's the best sensitivity? Guys, sensitivity is all about comfort. It really is. Now, when I talk about sensitivity, console players try a higher sensitivity because it allows you to play a little bit more snappy. I'm personally on 6'6". Six, six. What really matters when it comes to hitting shots is actually your ADS sensitivity multiplier. That's what's going to allow you to be precise when you're aimed down sight like he was just there. Or he wasn't very precise, but he was aimed down sight. And that's going to allow you to hit more shots. Now, let's go back to spectating a little bit. Got his teammates back at this point. This team's not not very good notice that they don't have any gameplay strategy it's the biggest area that i think a lot of you can improve upon is starting to figure out where people are starting to go challenge people and look that confidence will come with execution you know when i look at how to play confident how do these pro players just go full send situations and play confident it's because they have faith in their movement their aim and of course the information that they're playing upon to go get shots or to go get kills now he gets shot in the back and notice they're just kind of in the blender here they can't get any momentum actually going what do i think about the red room milano uh it's okay look the red room milano is a great gun for early game especially with the hip fire capabilities being able to hit fire is a huge advantage because you're able to get that first shot off when i talk about improving as a player the majority of the time it comes down to three things aim movement and anticipation the reason anticipation is so important is because whoever get that because of the fast ttk whoever get gets that first shot has a massive advantage and then we 
apply that to the fact that you can hit fire guns like the red room milano like the hit fire ppsh like the blixen a little bit and all these vanguard oh my gosh right around the corner that's a huge advantage to be able to to hit fire right there and get that first shot off how to improve well i'm gonna go ahead and link my warm-up video down in the description below for you but it comes down to aim and movement that's your starting point when it comes to getting better yeah okay so we're gonna go ahead and rotate to this next team assuming yeah let's go ahead and rotate to this next team when it comes down to getting better a lot of it comes down to aim and movement being able to consistently hit high damage areas get a fast time to kill because you're hitting those high damage areas using movement to take a little bit less damage and force your enemy to track you making it harder for them and anticipation like i said getting that first shot off how to raise your kd the fastest definitely going to be practice and look i know a lot of you are like joe i only have you know so many hours to play in a week i get it my warm-up video which again gonna leave in the description i talk about how how many times have you dropped into a game and that first game is an absolute blender game it is awful to be in you're not hitting shots you're not using movement well the game feels super fast if you take 10 minutes to warm up and and really work on your aim and work on your movement that first game is going to be so much better plus it's going to help you start to hit shots more consistently start to use your movement a little bit better and then we start to focus things on gameplay strategy and anticipation you know when it comes down to gameplay strategy guys what i am doing the whole entire game especially on rebirth rotations sure we can talk about rotations we can talk about positioning a lot of times i'm simply acting upon information so they pop uav up what do i see here okay control looks great i've got two teams three teams over at control potentially uh two teams we've got one down at dock and one up by the buy station so i'm gonna go ahead and push over that way why does this guy not get that down or why does this guy put himself in a bad position he gets the down why does he put himself in a bad position because he missed shots right there if he's able to cleanly get that first guy and then he's able to go challenge that second guy he's in a really good position serpentine right there gets the down one down below to his right so because he missed shots with the xm4 like see how that guy potentially has an opportunity to get away it's because he missed shots what do I do to warm up? I use Modern Warfare multiplayer. I use bots, which is the best way to do it. But you can also use like Golden Plunder or dropping it against real people and dropping those hot areas to improve. What should perks be for the second loadout? This is one of the most asked questions that I get. In my opinion, you should never grab two loadouts on Fortune's Keep or Rebirth Island unless that loadout does not survive another circle. So for example, let me show you on the mini map, right? So if your loadout was right here, I would probably grab that second loadout because it's not going to survive into this circle. But as long as a loadout is in circle, oh, this is great. I would not grab this loadout right now. Why? Because at the end of the day, if I die, I want to be able to fly back in and grab my guns and grab my perks. So I'd rather leave that second loadout up. So when it comes down to the second perk, I'm always running overkill. Always running overkill. My first perk is going to be quick fix for rebirth island just because i am playing a little bit more aggressive i'm 1v2ing 1v3ing and 1v4ing a lot and if you aren't doing that and you're playing kind of with a teammate or with teammates serpentine's a great option because if you're running away you're taking less damage for my perk three if i'm sniping i'm running amped if i'm not sniping i'm running combat scout i think combat scout's a huge advantage with the live ping component understanding where people are so i run combat scout and a lot of people are like no sweats run combat scout i'll be honest and a sweat goes to rechallenge me and tries to break my camera well he's live ping so i know exactly what he's gonna do i think it's a great advantage even in sweaty lobbies any tips advice for getting a 20 bomb on console three tips for console players play around the higher sensitivity so that you can play a little bit more snappy allows you to look left and right a little bit quicker allows you to kind of make up a little bit for that fov disadvantage number two is going to be always acting on information information is even more crucial for console players because you're not always going to be able to rely on what you see whereas a pc player can number three is going to be distance keep your distance stay outside of the five to seven meter range because that's where you're most susceptible to getting your camera broken now let's talk about this end game right here in this situation we have power position and cover two questions you always need to ask yourself where's your power position where's your cover power position and cover are going to be top prison right here so you need to go fight for top prison this way you can shoot down on everybody we've got six kills here we've got six kills here we've got three kills here and the last guy has let's see 
Last guy has one kill. So let's go to Jacob right here. Jacob's caught out in the open. He's got the XM4 and the MP40. He should push top prison roof. And then once that next circle happens, then you start to figure out, you know, okay, where do we rotate to next? Every time a circle changes or closes, you need to ask yourself, where's your power position? Where's your cover? And that's going to put you in the best position possible to not only pick up free kills from people that are rotating, but also put yourself in the best position to win, which look, every game that we play, you know, I do want to win. And, and I'll talk about that a little bit. People always ask, Joe, do I go for wins or do I go for kills? My whole viewpoint has always been that if you focus on improving as a player, working on your aim, working on your movement, anticipating better, getting information up, then the wins will take care of themselves because you'll be better than the other players in the lobby. They need to go ahead and push up. We've got a 4v essentially four four other people so it's a full team of four yep they've got to be up top they're up top so oh no he's in the corner bad anticipation by joe right there because i would have died i would have rechallenged that tried to break his camera a little bit that's a must rechallenge situation because he was so low health but if he rechallenges that he might be able to break the camera and win that he didn't even check that he didn't check at all Top prison is still your power positioning, your cover. Whoever has top prison is going to be in the best spot because they can shoot down on people. They also have a lot of cover. And the reason cover is so important is because power position is great until you get caught out in the open and have nowhere to go and then the other team just shoots you. What if I? What should I do if I mainly get in close quarter situations on console? Stop doing that. Oh, let me explain. I always talk about you're either pushing somebody or you're being pushed. You know, the aggressive players are constantly pushing enemies, and when they are all, then they're when they're getting pushed and they're in a bad position, they find a way to regain that fight by repositioning, and then they get back in it by pushing that enemy down below to your left. Yep. Notice he missed shots low there, but he's able to get away with it. The 3x Marco right here. Last team, 2v2, top prison. Yep. So you need to stop putting yourself in those positions. Start pushing enemies and positioning yourself based on where they actually are. Putting yourself in the best position possible. A lot of players on console, you're not pushing and you're getting pushed. What ends up happening is they're pushing into the position where they can break your camera. And then you're caught in a bad spot. This is now, this whole thing has switched. It's a 2v3. Uh, it's, uh, no, it's a 3v1. 3v1 across the street. Low plate. So this isn't a this isn't a surefire win. He's back behind. Yeah, one goes down. Can this guy clutch up? This guy has no plates. He's got a live ping. Great live ping right there. Yep, there's the win. I hope you found today's video helpful. As I always say, let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.